What piqued your curiosity in the first place about this homeless guy? Uh, desperation, <laughs> sweating out another column. Looked like it could work. I thought, okay, where did this all begin? How does this guy end up on this uh, street corner? Playing the music in that tunnel with the cars and exhaust and God knows what. Why there? It seemed orchestral. The commotion, the calamity, and the and the and the the sounds. You, you were know, you were part of the, the uh, of the symphony of a big city. Well, uh, it, it, schizophrenically, yes. <laughs> He was one of only a few black students in his class at Juilliard where the competition was cutthroat. It was really sink or swim. He had to prove himself as a musician and probably on some level had to um, uh, disabuse people of the notion that maybe he was there because he was African American. Dropping, he was angry and confrontational with teachers and fellow students. Nobody knew what was going on with Nathaniel, but in fact he was losing his mind. He ended up in a police car on his way to Bellevue Hospital, and that was it. His, uh, his career went off a cliff. Um, this career that um, you know, might well have landed him in one of the great orchestras of the world was done. <laughs> one, two, three. The orchestra's musicians also took up Mr. Ayer's cause, rehearsing with him. Pianist Joanne Pierce Martin takes him through the music He's loved since his student days. When he comes into this building, he transforms into a different, a different person. As publicist for the orchestra, Adam Crane became friends with Mr. Ayers. Do you get any sense of what his talent might have been had he not had the illness? You either have it or you don't. He has it. He feels it. Um, he was very rusty, but clearly he knows what he's doing. Will Mr. Ayers ever be able to play at Mr. Gupta's level? It's doubtful, but that, says the young teacher, isn't the point. The fact that he has people that understand him and that respect him and that uh, wish him well, I think that is in, in incredibly therapeutic for him. And to no longer be considered some nut on the street. Exactly. You want to believe that this man is well on the way to recovery. Um, the next day, he's the devil. His eyes um, are bloodshot, and there's rage and terror in them. Action! It's fitting, perhaps, since they met in the movie Capital, that a film has been made about Mr. Ayers and Mr. Lopez. The soloist is based on the book Mr. Lopez wrote about this odd couple. Several hundred homeless people were hired to play themselves, who, after all, could do it better. And the stars are Robert Downey Jr. as Mr. Lopez and Jamie Foxx as Mr. Ayers, a story that confirms that life is indeed stranger than fiction. It's very good to be alive right now. It's very good to be able to be in the company of Mr. Lopez. It's the most meaningful friendship that I've had in my life. It's the one I've learned the most from. In this process, did you kind of discover the inner good guy? I think that I did. He grew to trust me, and he grew to rely on me, and I knew that he needed that in his life, and I felt good about giving that. Mr. Harris, nice work. A lot of wrong notes, but I, I tried.